good morning to one and all today we are going to deal with the things of uh, electronic parts diodes and transistors diodes in the sense we are having some ordinary pn junction diode cnr diode whereas transistors here is we are having some bjd bipolar junction transistor in this one is a evaluation of electronics starts from vacuum tubes to nano electronics Electronics is nothing but study of flow of electrons. It's nothing but current in electrical circuits. The first generation, they may use some vacuum tubes here and the duration of this one is 1900. 1947, it leads to transistors, second generation, ICs integrated circuits, third generation, small scale integration, one to 100 transistors, 100 to 1000 transistors, maybe medium scale, 1000 to 10,000, it's a large scale. VLSI very large scale integration, it's a 10,000 to 1 million transistors. From 1 to 10 million transistors may be called as ultra large scale integration. It's fifth generation. Then the next one, GSI, chain scale integration, more than 10 million transistors. Finally, we land upon the things of nano electronics device, 10 to the power of minus 9. It's almost a minute particle. High speed, low power, nano size, and high level. Opposite to this one, first generation vacuum tubes. These are the evolution of electronics. Coming to the part of PN junction diode and CNR diode here. What is a diode? This one is a anode and cathode is a two polarities. CNR diode, it's a jet shape like this, anode and cathode. Combining this P type and N type will form some diode symbol. P type semiconductor material and type semiconductor material will join together. We got this PN junction diode. If it is heavily doped, we may call it as channel. This one is a forward bias that it is biasing in the sense connecting this external battery that it is positive and negative in order to move these electrons. That may be called it as bias. Clearly observe P is connected to positive and is connected to negative and the depletion layer. The middle one may be called it as this one as depletion layer with becomes almost thin. And we can have some current in forward bias. Reverse bias in the sense, observe this one. This one is a forward bias. Conduction takes place. Free flow of electrons will be there. Yeah, reverse bias. Observe this reverse bias. P is connected to negative terminal. N is connected to positive terminal. And this depletion layer width becomes larger. And there is no current. Current almost becomes zero. It can act as a part of open circuit. That's it. These are the lines you have to write. And by observing this one, we have to plot this graph like this. Forward current IF, and we can have some current of milliamperes. This one is voltage, forward voltage VF, V. This one is microamperes. Due to the forward bias, we have some cutting voltage of silicon here as 0.7. After that, it can exponentially increase like this. Forward bias. Up to the cutting voltage, it's on a small amount of current will be there. After cutting voltage, it can increase drastically like this. This one is a diagram we have to draw in the examination. Same reverse mass, third quadrant. We can have some uh, small amount of current there due to the part of minority charge carriers. And this avalanche breakdown will occur there. Reverse breakdown will be there. This one is a diagram we have to draw. Small amount of current is due to only minority charge carriers. If you can uh, give it uh, so much of reverse voltage, it can break it out. If you can give given beyond that voltage, the diode will uh, damage out. These are the characteristics you have to draw for PN junction diode. Same thing for the part of silicon and germany. When the reverse voltage is increased beyond the value and the breakdown occurs, that reverse current increases sharply enough. That, uh, that breakdown may be called it as avalanche breakdown. Reverse voltage, if it is beyond 35 volts, the diode junction permanently damaged. Then the applications for the part of diodes here is rectifiers, flippers, clampers, multipliers. In our syllabus, we are having some rectifiers only in the next unit. Diode cannot conduct a reverse bias and the current becomes zero. It can conduct only in forward bias. The cutting voltage or voltage drop here is 0 0.7 for silicon, 0 0.34 germanium. This one is a general diode in forward. Same, we can change only the specific Z symbol like this. 
remaining everything is gone. It's a supply, positive, negative. This one is a load. This one is forward bias and this one is reverse bias. Zener diode, it's a special diode. In this one, we can have some uh, heavily doped. Doping section is heavily. It's on a heavily doped PN junction diode that works in reverse bias condition is called zener. In this particular uh, reverse bias, we can observe both the things of avalanche and zener breakdown. This one is the thing. The Zener effect is the dominant breakdown effect occurs in reverse bias. At a voltage of below 5 volts only, we can occur that breakdown. That's the main intention. Why means it's a heavily do. This graph you have to draw in the examination. VI characteristics of Zener diode. Forward is almost the same of P and action diode. And whereas the reverse here is Zener breakdown. After that, it becomes almost a strike line like this. When I can increase uh, this current from uh, IZ minimum to the part of IZ maximum, there is no change in the part of voltage. Zener voltage is almost the same. That's why you can use it as a part of voltage regulator or voltage stabilizer. That's the main intention of this particular Zener. This graph you have to draw for Zener diode. Both the things you can observe. Sharp breakdown can occur below 5 volts. It can use it as voltage regulator, more voltage protection, clipping circuits, noise reduction, applications point of view. We can observe this one. Zener breakdown can occur in between 5 to 8 volts. Avalanche is greater than 8 volts. Next one, bipolar junction transistor BJT. In this BJT, we are having some uh, three terminals emitter base collector. Emitter is heavily doped, base is lightly doped, collector is moderately doped. And the part of area wise, collector occupies large space, base occupies small space, and the emitter occupies medium space. That's it. This was the symbols. Connecting two PN junction diodes back to back, we can observe some, some transistor. Three terminal, PN, PN, NPN types. These are the terms. NPN arrow mark is for the part of which thing emitter. This one is PN arrow mark is inserted like this. Standard symbols. Emitter send the carriers into the base and then on the collector. Base, collector, emitter. Symbols. These are the symbols. And don't forget to write this uh, emitter current is obviously equal to summation of base current and collector current. When you come across BJT operation, you have to write this equation. Emitter current is equal to base current plus collector current. If it is NPN, the majority charge carriers are electrons. If it is uh, PNP, the majority charge carriers are holes. That's it. You have to draw this diagram. NPN, PNP. For the part of N, connected negative, holes to. This one is nothing but forward bias and this one is connected in reverse bias. That mode of operation may be called it as active mode of operation. And don't forget the things here. We have to draw the specific middle line. Then only we can uh, segregate this, uh, this side and this side. This one. Yeah. When we have some uh, NPN transistor, 100 electrons will travel from this side. Only 5% of electrons will recombine in this part of holes here. And the remaining 95% electrons will travel toward the part of this side. And we have some connection here is, it's a reverse bias one, negative and positive line. Again, this one is connected to the part of negative positive. This one is positive length is negative. All these electrons is attracted towards the part of this positive term. And we can travel like this in a shape. The majority charge carriers here is electrons. Let 100 electrons will travel from emitter. Only 5% will recombine in a base. And the remaining 95% uh, will travel towards the part of collector. That it is IE is equal to IB plus IC you have to write. In the examination, you have to draw that particular circuit, this one. Then that uh, IE is equal to IB plus IC, that's enough. And the modes of operation. Don't forget this time, emitter, base, collector. Write this particular first one. Active mode of operation. Emitter junction, this one. Collector junction, this one. Emitter junction is obviously in which bias? Forward. Collector junction is obviously in which bias? Reverse bias. 
this mode of operation we can use it for amplifier or else pnp or npn transistor operation also there this one active mode in the sense it's a perfect operation cut off in the sense open saturated in the sense it becomes short configurations wise common base common emitter common collector input emitter base base like this yeah this one these are the three symbols if i'd like to make it base as ground that may be called it as common base if i'd like to make it emitter as ground that may be called it as common emitter if i'd like to make it collector as ground that may be called it as common collector common in the sense make it the terminal ground this one is common base uh, transistor configuration here or characteristics you have to draw some uh, two characteristics here this one may be called it as input characteristics similar to the part of forward bias characteristics in diode these are the output characteristics it's almost the same current lens and don't forget the thing here this emitter this one may be called it as n p n if n is connected to negative p is connected to positive that bias may be called it as forward bias this one may be called it as reverse bias this mode of operation may be called it as active mode of operation the current here is ie and the voltage here is in between b and e terminals now this one vbe this left hand side portion may be called it as input and the characteristics here is ie versus vbe ie versus vbe and we have to make some uh, outer side constant voltage vcb and don't forget in between uh, two points we can have some two terminals voltage for the part of current only one terminal you have to write ie or ic something forward bias characteristics for the part of uh, output characteristics here that ic current is almost equal to the part of ie current ic current is almost equal to the part of ie current that's why constant lines like this this mode is active mode of operation that's it input characteristics output characteristics alpha is nothing but current gain output current divided by input current what's output current here ic input current ie that ratio may be called it as alpha that may be called it as current gain same similarly ce characteristics make it ground emitter and the left side portion base emitter voltage vbe right side portion collector emitter voltage and this current here is ib these two is may be called it as input characteristics and these two may be called it as output characteristics similar to the part of forward bias characteristics here for the output characteristics is almost constant like this lines and what's the current gain here is beta is equal to ic divided by ib gain this one is gain similar thing common collector make it ground this collector and what's this voltage left hand side voltage base collector voltage right hand side voltage collector emitter voltage and the current here is ib and the current here is ie this characteristics is a slant like this drop this one is constant like this these characteristics are input characteristics and these characteristics are output characteristics that's it next one can you use that a transistor can act as a part of amplifier what's that amplifier is nothing but strengthening the weak signal to this one is a weak signal i'd like to make it to strong signal which configuration would like to prefer here is c ground here is emitter terminal we know this connection and we know all these things and don't forget transistor symbol npn input side sinusoidal i have given small signal it rises to the part of short signal like this and remember the part resistance you have to draw across this resistance only we can expect some output this one may be called as single stage rc coupled amplifier it's a single stage if i'd like to use same diagram for the next case that it is multi stage thank you